Fortunately, by this time I'd regained my presence of mind and was able to hold tightly to the rope in spite of my pain. At approximately the same time, however, the barrel of bricks hit the ground and the bottom fell out of the barrel. Devoid of the weight of the bricks, the barrel now weighed approximately 50 pounds. I refer you again to my weight in block number 11. As you might imagine, I began a rapid descent down the side of the building. In the vicinity of the third floor, I met the barrel coming up. This accounts for the two fractured ankles and the lacerations of my legs and lower body. The encounter with the barrel slowed me enough to lessen my injuries when I fell onto the pile of bricks. Fortunately, only three vertebrae were cracked. I'm sorry to report, however, that as I lay there on the bricks in pain, unable to stand, and watching the empty barrel six stories above me, I again lost my presence of mind. I let go of the rope. Thank you, Fred McCurley. <laughs> That was Fred's younger days when he was playing brick. <laughs> well, I'm delighted you're here tonight. Turn to the book of Luke, chapter 12. I have often said this. I've said it where I have taught at seminars, where I've preached to preachers. I said, there's no shortage of money. God ain't broke. And I'll say in your life and in your home and in your family, there's no shortage of money. God ain't broke. He got plenty. We need to learn how to manage it. Do you realize that if you're 20 years old, if you were 20 years old in 1970 and you worked just a normal job, the average income in the South, that by the time you reach retirement age, more than three quarters of a million dollars will be passed through your hands? That's a heap of money. If I had all that tonight, Eddie, I'd dismiss and go somewhere. Jesus. Amen. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed tonight. There might be one in the service that would say, well, God spoke to my heart tonight. Preacher, I don't know whether I'm saved or not, but would you pray for me? where you are. Would you slip a hand up long enough for me to see it? I don't know whether I'm saved or not. Great commandment. And Jesus did not answer, Thou shalt not. But rather to the contrary, he summed it all up in Christian living with came to minister to one in need. I look around at our society today, I say beyond a shadow of a doubt that we need a lot more good Samaritans who will take time to minister to that fallen one or to that hungry one or to that child without any clothes, who will take time to visit that one in prison. I see Dick and Sandy Stump in the service tonight, directors in the Bill Glass ministry, who they stop and take time out of a busy life to visit that one in prison and to tell him about the love of God and to put that love in you and I. And if our faith only, if our faith is a pre-Christmas faith, we'll only obey the law. Let me hurriedly say in the second place, your faith is a pre-Christmas faith. If it's never made that vital move from your lips to your heart, now we get this kind of sterile intellectual approach to the gospel and it's a produced a generation that has Christ on their lips but no Christ in their hearts. Tonight on the way to church, Sister Fritz was asking me, she said, how do you pray for a person that's out of to himself? When the Holy Spirit of God begins to convict the sinner, he'll come to himself and realize that he's in need of God's salvation and the greatest Christmas that you can ever have is when you take the one that was the babe of Bethlehem and take him as a living Lord into your life. And summer after another violent year in the ghetto, he returned to the country and to his peaceful, friendly mode of living with, the, with this comment. He said, the real me is here. 
Perhaps tonight we've missed the whole point of Christmas and Christianity. No longer shall we dependent, be dependent on an external law, but upon an indwelling spirit. He's paid for all of our sins, and the death of Jesus Christ is sufficient for all of the sins of all of the world, but only efficient to those who trust in him. And if our faith is a free Christian faith, if it's a faith of the lips, but not of the heart, I ask you tonight, we're coming into the Christmas season, I ask you, get someone on your heart. Last night, is Dan here tonight? Dan and Debbie was over at my house last night. And Dan said, preacher, he said, every year, and Evelyn, Evelyn that's your son-in-law, said every year, year he's here, said we pay a post-Thanksgiving thing. Or is it pre-Christmas? Let's stand together. Heavenly Father,